Welcome to Making High Performing Carbon Foam for Supercapacitors Batteries Part 2. Uh, this is where I show you how to process that carbon that we've made uh, in the shed. Uh, the first thing we need to do is to wash out all of the metals. Uh, the first thing, the way we do that is to use uh, a dilute solution of hydrochloric acid. That's about 36% in there. So we need to uh, dilute that down. I uh, get this empty washing up squeezy bottle and uh, filled it to about a third of that with the hydrochloric acid and then about two thirds the rest with deionized water. So about 10% of uh, hydrochloric acid in that squeezy bottle. Then what I do is fill up this jam jar with about two, uh, two thirds full, I allow enough room for the acid obviously, with uh, deionized water. Now because I take this hobby quite seriously and use quite a lot of water, deionized water, you might find it worthwhile investing in one of these. This is a reverse osmosis system uh, uh, with a deionized uh, filter included. So this has cost about £100 for me. Uh, you store it under the sink so it turns your tap water into clean deionized water. So uh, it saves you having to buy lots of tubs and tubs of deionized water all the time. So we pour in the deionized water, pour it in um, quite slowly because uh, some of the carbon foam can become airborne if you pour it in too quickly. So we'll fill this about two thirds full, and then what we'll do is we'll put in a, we'll stir it all up, put it on my magnetic stirrer, and then we'll uh, add in the hydrochloric acid. Just got a glass rod here just to wet all the carbon, make sure that uh, all the carbon is wetted. Give it an initial stir with the glass rod. Now for this initial uh, bit you could use tap water instead uh, as long as you uh, finish up with deionized water in the end. Um, but ideally you would use deionized water right the way through uh, the whole process. So then we're going to put it on my magnetic stir stirrer, add the acids and then we'll filter it through my vacuum filter pump. Putting the uh, magnetic stir bar Put it on my magnetic stirrer. Round it up. So what you do is just pour in a small amount of the dilute hydrochloric acid and you'll see it uh, fizzing a little bit. It, it will sound a little bit different and it will just uh, start to foam a little bit and you'll just get the general idea of just uh, how much you need. You'll just notice it, just the noise changing a little bit. And that dark grey colour turning more to a black. That is pretty much all you need. You can leave that to stir for another five or ten minutes, that's totally up to you, just to make sure that all of the uh, oxides are turned into chlorides and we've got everything dissolved into the water, just leaving the carbon, which is what we want. Uh, you also get a bit of a smell as well from it smells a little bit like uh, rotten eggs I suppose. Okay so while that's still stirring what we're going to do is set up the vacuum filter to uh, filter it out all the, the all the water with all the salts. Uh, we're going to finish it all up with uh, deionized water. It's deionized water in this wash bottle here and we're just going to wet the uh, filter paper Make sure it's all nice and flat. Switch on the uh, pump. So I decided to do a, a voiceover on this bit so you don't have to hear the noise of the uh, of the pump. So uh, once you've uh, got it uh, well and truly stirred, then with the vacuum pump on, uh, we pour in the uh, in the carbon. 
and uh, got some tweezers ready to uh, grab hold of the stir bar. I'll speed it up the film a little bit for you and we'll wait for all of the, uh, the water of all the salts to disappear. So we're just going to lift off the filter paper. These aren't the best tweezers in the world. And I've just got to wash bits off the filter paper. Doesn't really matter if you waste a bit. What we do is just chop that up a little bit. Helps to make it dry a bit quicker. So all we got should have in there is just basically a bit of water and just the carbon. So now we're going to go and put that in the oven at about uh, around about 100, 120 degrees to dry off. So that's what it looks like after it's come out of the oven and it's all in big chunks. It only weighs about one and a half grams. Remember this is just half of the batch. So the whole batch that we did yesterday in the shed uh, equates to about three grams of the actual carbon. But of course once we've got it in the kiln and uh, heated it to about a thousand degrees then we'll probably get just over a gram of the finished carbon product. Let's put it in the grinder and get it into a nice fluffy powder. Alright so what we do is we'll put it into um, a grinder like this. This is um, the blade type of coffee grinder. This is quite a good make. And uh, what we do is we'll pop all of the uh, the carbon into there, put the lid on, and switch it on. Again, I've uh, taken the sound off uh, because the noise is quite annoying of the of the actual grinding. I've sped it up two times here the video, so uh, it takes about thirty seconds to grind it and uh, shake it up and down a bit, make sure it's all grounded down. Uh, then we leave it to settle down uh, for a good half an hour or so because a lot of the carbon can become airborne. And then we stick it all in a jam jar. So we're back in the shed and uh, once you've got your carbon foam it is now ready to put it inside the kiln to heat it to anywhere between 800 and 1200 degrees. Um, if it's heated um, above anywhere above 800 it will start to become a lot more conductive. Um, I'm going to heat mine to 1100 degrees um, in my homemade kiln. Now of course you can go out and buy uh, your own um, um, electric kiln. Uh, you can use gas kilns as well, but I think they're a lot more expensive. Um, to cut the cost, I decided to build my own. And uh, this heats to uh, 1300 degrees. Now, I did a lot of research on, um, on the internet just to get uh, some hints on to how to build these things. And a good website is uh, Instructables, I think I found via using Google. And um, also there's probably some YouTube videos on people making their own um, electric kilns. Uh, what you have in electric kiln obviously the main the fairly simple devices and the main thing is obviously heating um, heating elements wire like this. This is one that I got from eBay. This is a spare one and they come in this form and this is I think a 2.5 kilowatt um, heating element and the thing is they what you need to do before you put it in your kiln is you've got to stretch it out and keep it stretched to the length that you require it to be. Um, you will need to buy one of these temperature controllers um, modules that you can get on eBay and this is a thermocoupler uh, that can withstand 1300 uh, degrees. That feeds back the temperature into the, uh, into the controller. Uh, so those are important parts of it. Um, to make the kiln itself, to make it highly insulated, um, you need to buy something like this. These are um, soft fire bricks. Uh, these are soft fire bricks, so they're easier to cut to whatever shape uh, you want to. I've got these um, from Bath Pottery here in the UK. And uh, also some ceramic wall as well is good for insulating. And what we uh, what we do is we take the lid off. It's just an aluminium lid made out of a sheet of aluminium, and this is the inside here. This is mostly fire brick and some fire cement. You notice there's a recess here. That recess is to help keep the air out 
of my um, quartz glass bowl which I have here. Uh, these actually are a bit similar to um, singing bowls uh, that are made out of quartz glass. They're quite expensive. However, I was able to get three of these at a really, really cheap price. Um, a once in a lifetime opportunity that I could buy three of these on eBay uh, for a very low cost. And these um, really help to protect uh, your um, graphite crucibles or whatever crucible you're going to use from the radiation from the heating elements because it can get very, uh, very intense and it helps to keep the air out um, as well. Inside these, now if you don't get hold of quartz glass, um, you, you can uh, use stainless steel. They won't last as long, uh, they're not as good, but um, they can be used, particularly if, if you go for a stainless steel with you know, quite thick uh, walls. Um, inside we've got um, carbon uh, material, we've got some um, charcoal briquettes, some bits of coal and some activated carbon in there. And that all helps to create a carbonized, a carbon atmosphere uh, inside, which uh, is really helpful to graphitize your carbon and uh, make it a lot more conductive. What I do is I get uh, one of these crucibles. These are the biggest that I could find uh, from China on eBay that uh, came with a lid. And uh, I put all my carbon in there, put the lid in there, put it inside the bowl, put the lid on, and uh, off we go. You can get bigger crucibles, uh, graphite uh, cru uh, crucibles like this. Again, you don't necessarily have to use graphite, you could use stainless steel. Um, this is a graphite crucible, which, and I made my own lid for this one. Uh, it's made out of fire clay and fire brick. Put that on there. So what I do is I bought quite a few of these. It means that you can put in um, you can put in lots of different uh, carbons uh, if you only want to do small amounts, and uh, so you can only you can just have one go uh, in the in the kiln. Um, so what I do is put the the, um, the foam in the um, graphite crucible, put it in there, put the lid on. And as I say, I'm going to switch this on to 1100 degrees. Another thing to mention, if you are making your own kiln, it's important to put in your own um, exhaust hole here, uh, which connects to inside the bowl uh, to prevent any major gas buildup. And what I do to help stop too much air getting in is I just put together um, a little bit of ceramic wall and covered it in a bit of carbon fibre and I just put that over the top of the hole just to st stop air from getting in basically. Obviously the gas build up inside the chamber was to build up too high this will just blow off anyway so um, so it's important that you do that just to make sure um, that there's no pressure build up inside the kiln. So what I do is um, Leave that to go up to about 1100 degrees. Mine takes about an hour and a half to get up to there. And then what I do is I switch it off overnight and um, we'll um, take out the carbon the next morning. Okay, so this is the uh, the jam jar of, of the carbon out of the kiln. You have to see just how light and fluffy this carbon foam is. So it hasn't even registered yet. There we go, it's only just registered on the scales. Half a gram. <laughs> if that. Point four of a gram. So I would think that the whole batch would equate to about a gram or so. Uh, I think there's slightly more in the other one. I'd describe it as a black soot almost. Really lightweight and um, really really good carbon foam for your supercapacitor or battery.